Alright, hey everyone, Electropolitan here, bringing you another F-Zero GX tutorial, this time on model swapping. So, for model swapping, uh, you go to the root vehicle folder, that's where you're going to mostly be working in, and I took the arc files, now that's where um, most of the files are stored, with the exception of the preview one. So, in the input folder, I placed the arc files and extracted them, unpacked them, if you will, uh, opened it up, and now I got uh, these textures. So we're going to be making our, an R-Wing over James's little wyvern. So uh, there's the little wyvern. I imported both the texture and the model, the TPL and the GMA. And now I'm going to export it. You can see at the top right, export OBJ slash MTL. I'm going to export that. And I don't remember where I put it. Uh, you can see. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on. So anyway, I'm using Wings 3D. You can use pretty much any uh, 3D modeling software. Uh, Blender, ZBrush, I don't even know if that is one, uh, Maya, probably, I, I don't really know, uh, 3ds Max, anyway, I, I just ended up with wings, so I imported both of them, and you're going to notice right off the bat that nearly all the GX models and textures, or I guess I should say objects, all of them are flipped around and very small. Now, the R wing is already pretty small. I think I got this trophy from Smash Bros., so it's pretty small. But if you import characters, vehicles from other games, like the GX models are not even the size of a toe. It's really weird. So you have to do a lot of scaling, a lot, a lot of scaling. So you can see I'm um, yeah, shrinking it. Then you have to rotate it, uh, move it around. Now, there might be a shortcut just to make the object go to 0, 0, 0. I haven't found that yet. <laughs> I've only done like two minutes of watching a tutorial on these programs. I never, I should get this out of the way, I've never used a 3D modeling software before I started doing GX modeling. So if I could do it, anyone could do it. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm straightening it out. I'm trying to align the boosters. Uh, so originally, I didn't know this until a few hours ago, but I figured we weren't sure where the boosters were held, the boost effects. So you could take any ship and put it on any vehicle, but the boost had its own file that we weren't sure of. Turns out it's the FMI file, which I'm not even entirely sure to edit how to edit. I Googled it and there's like a FME opener or something like that. And there's like a demo for it. So I don't know, we don't really need to mess with it. We can take other vehicles FMIs and swap it around. For example, if I was using uh, this R-Wing and I wanted the booster to be like Zoda's Death Anchor, I could just take Zoda's FMI file, it's one uh, kilobyte, I take that and just drag it into uh, where the little wyverns folder is. Before that, we ha I had to like line up the booster. So it doesn't, I mean, you still should line up the boosters. So it's not all wonky and whacked out. So I'm doing that for a bit. Okay, so I finished it up. Uh, let's just say I skipped ahead. I exported it as an OBJ, and there it is. I imported it as an OBJ once again in GX Model Viewer. Now GX Model Viewer can't take massive models, so you have to shrink it and scale it and make it look all nice and compact in some 3D modeling software. And also every vehicle has a steering wheel. It's pretty annoying and I, sometimes get errors, I don't really know. I just remove it. So, yeah, you can see I input it again. Now, once that's in there, you can, yeah, you can see I'm uh, making it look all nice. You just export uh, the TPL and the GMA, once again, the texture and model file. Then you're gonna take those and just place them everywhere. You're going to put them in the P arc, the E arc, and the regular folder. So here's what I'm doing. Pasting in both of them, copying the name, just deleting it, renaming, and then yada yada, repeat, repeat. Uh, I usually just rename the and replace the biggest one. You see that, that was the FMI file right there. So uh, P is for single player, mostly, and E is for multiplayer, mostly, and the SV is multiplayer, CV is single player, or if there's nothing, it's also single player. Uh, so I noticed 
depending on your camera angle, you know, there's four different angles in GX, you know, like the first person view, the two good ones, and the four, the fourth one that's way too far back. Um, so if someone actually plays with a really far back one, they're going to use a multiplayer model. And so that's why you should replace all the models and sometimes even the second level, the O2 or O3 version, or else your vehicle is going to change models in the middle of a race. It's pretty weird. It looks funky. If you really like it, you can go for it. Anyway, you can see I took the new models and textures, replaced all the other stuff, copied it and pasted it in the input folder, then packed it, and then got the output extracts, put them in my root folder, you can see up there, and then I just rebuilt, closed and reopened, rebuilt, the GC Rebuilder, my, my ISO, my 123 ISO. So now I'm going to open the game, and uh, there it is. All nice and dandy. And you can see the booster is uh, not perfect. The wings are probably too low to the ground. Yeah, the booster is a little too far to the left. So I, I did fix this later on, don't worry. <laughs> I know I'm putting out the tutorial right after I released it. But I, I could always update it. Yeah, it's annoying how the wings are so close to the ground, but thankfully the... Uh, Vehicles do hover in the game. All right. So next, let's talk about the faces. So the top left corner, uh, you saw for Samus, I had it, it was a face, it's a unique face. Um, so here's the one for James, and we're gonna and we're gonna replace it. So yeah, we're gonna change the face at the top left corner when you're doing time trial or uh, you know Grand Prix and whatnot. So it turns out in Grand Prix has a has a different face than um, time trial and practice for that matter. Um, the arc file, no, no, I know what it is. Each, for time trials, each character has face.tpl and face.gma. For everything else, they're stored in an arc file. So you have to take the arc, yeah, I have it right there. You have to take the arc, uh, unpack it. You see I'm doing that now. Uh, and that is for all the other modes, which is pretty annoying. But, uh, do what you gotta do, eh? Now here I'm importing the face, and I don't know if you noticed, but these faces are friggin' tiny, three kilobytes. Like, these things are compact. So, I go to Model Resources, it's a great website, I just learned about it a few days ago, well, like yesterday. Uh, so I'm gonna replace James with Fox, or at least I tried to, I mean, as of uh, today, July 5th. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to get the melee model. All right, so we're going to work with the melee model. So I import the melee model, and as you can see, I got some oh, whatever. It gives a crap. And you can see the model is massive. So is it that? I, I'm pretty sure just the F0 models are really small. It's really weird. Every model I've imported is huge compared to the F0 ones. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do is just delete all that crap. We just need the face. That's all we need. So um, yeah, I deselect uh, the chin. We got a massive face, like Andros or something. Uh, so then what I do is you can combine it. So I'm gonna do that, combine it. So now the face is one entity. I'm gonna scale that. Because if you scale it without combining, then all the parts individually get shrunken and you just don't do it. Um, so I'm importing the James face once again. And now I'm just gonna line it up. Just kind of like what I did with the R-Wing and Little Wyvern. <clears throat> Not the most exciting, but yeah. So I'll just tell you, uh, the face had too many polygons and was too big for the F0 limit. So it didn't work. I ended up using, it looked so bad. Yeah, so I ended up getting the 64 Fox and I never played 64, but I don't really like his face in there. So I didn't want to use that. It's just a bit too low quality for me. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, you can see I'm lining up uh, Fox with James, I'm trying to get it perfect. Just even a slight uh, off-put would look really bad up close. So getting that perfect did take quite some time and, you know, didn't even uh, work. But yeah, this is what I suggest you do, just kind of like melt the face into the other and see which features come out first and then, you know, react uh, accordingly. So that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna export, oh, first rename this. 
I don't know if this matters. For vehicles, it doesn't, but for faces, it might. I'm not entirely sure. It seemed like it worked after I did this. Uh, rename it to that, you know, for each character. <laughs> uh, export the OBJ. Import it, a GX model viewer. Oh, and you have to export the OBJ in the same folder as the textures. So you can't be moving folders and all that. Um, but you probably have better naming conventions than I did. So there's uh, Melee Fox in the GX model viewer. So I'm going to save the TPL, save the GMA, and then you know replace and swap. And it didn't, en didn't end up working. So there's that. I tried another Fox, this time from Project M and it had a bunch of textures in it. The texture file was like almost 600 kilobytes. And remember, these had to be like, well, they're supposed to be like three kilobytes. This was way too big. Um, so here are some tips to shrink your model. Now, to shrink the polygons, I'm not too sure of, but to shrink the textures, I could do that. Um, so what I did was, well, you should first probably name your, um, name your textures on the right. Oh, I did a pretty poor job of that. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is like four of the textures were duplicated. So I'm going to use one texture and apply it to a whole bunch of Fox's face. So this is the one I want. And I'm going to apply that to Fox's scarf. So yeah, I delete it. And then yeah, we have two eye textures. We don't need that. Get rid of one of the eye textures. You can see. And you can see the four rectangles up there. Each one has a different selector. So one that selects wireframes, one that selects, I guess, corners of wireframes, one that selects, uh, I don't know, what, triangles that the, that the wireframes make, and one that selects entire models, I guess, altogether. Yeah, I guess that's a way to put it. So anyway, uh, I'm going to select this one. And you could click and drag as a select, or you could just click and, well, click and drag again. It's hard to explain <laughs> without showing you. So now we're going to, I was looking for it, you're going to right click mat, and it's uh, right click mat assigned to selection. So there it is. There's Fox's eye. So now I have one texture on two different, well, they aren't really models, but two different I don't know, groupings of polygons, I guess. Yeah, anyway, so here I'm doing it again. I'm selecting Fox's scarf, and I'm gonna apply his outfit texture onto it, because we had two before. This is the one, so now I'm just going to right click, mat, and then apply to section, press spacebar to deselect, and there it is, now it's red. So I do that later on, I'm trying to shrink the file size. I get the file size, I get the file size about half as much as it was before. It was like now it's like 250 kilobits, kilobytes. Still too, still too big. Uh, the same as one I have is like 40 kilobytes, and that works. So worth a shot. Now the other thing I wanted to mention before I go is selecting the vehicle, uh, the the machine selection screen. That has its own model as well. So it's in root vehicle, and it's going to be vehicle select dot arc dot lz, and it worked for Rainbow Phoenix when I replaced it with Samus's ship, but it didn't work with James's R wing. So maybe it was too big, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. There is also the folder. Um, so there's. There's the E and the P LZ, and there's also the folder. Then there's the selection. Um, so yeah, <laughs> be sure to replace all those, at least three. But if you want the selection, then don't forget that other one. All right, now I want to mention this before I finish the video. So uh, in all my previews and whatnot, I didn't show a character replacing another character in the preview screen. And let me. You see for Samus right here, I didn't replace Phoenix. I replaced the ship in the background, but I didn't replace Phoenix himself. And let me talk about that. So, um, this right here, let me, um, in the root folder, there is all these files. And so 100 is the model of your character in the vehicle, in the cockpit. 
Um, 500 maybe is, I don't know, a higher quality version of that. It's not that important. I, I, they're not used that much. The ARC ones are the most important ones, and of course you have to extract these with the LZ extractor. So the ARC ones are the massive ones. These are the ones which I believe is organized by... So this is when you select your character. This, hmm, which is this one? Well, anyway, it goes in quality. So this is selection. This is medium quality, high quality, super high quality. And so I'm pretty sure this is for the interview. This is when you select your character. And this is the multiplayer version. This, uh, I don't know, it's probably not that important. <laughs> uh, so back to Falcon. So I tried to replace Captain Falcon with the melee Falcon, just to see what would happen. It's not that high quality, and uh, yeah. So what would happen is he would end up being invisible. So if I went here, I'm curious. Now you can see my models, these are the three I replaced, these are the four I replaced, even five, are way bigger. They aren't even that much bigger. So I don't know why it didn't work. They ended up being invisible. And yeah, they just end up being invisible. You can see all the textures and whatnot. Now, what might be an explanation is, I think it was here. No, no, this is not the one. Selection. Yeah, so this is where your character moves around. There's a little thing. Yeah, I know it's a bit funky. It's pretty cool, actually. So I took the melee one and stuck it here. However, I the selection models have special things with them. Uh, you can see they have their hands because you know their hands move, their face which moves around. Um, this is the thing I added the body. I replaced the body, but all of this was invisible except the gloves. So it was just floating gloves. Now I imagine if you want to replace these, you have to do them individually, and even then it still didn't work for me so I don't know if it would work for you but I don't know these this 3, 3D modeling I only learned this stuff like yesterday or the day before <laughs> uh, but you can see we still got pretty far so if you are well versed in it then definitely give it a shot and you could really be helpful for the community so um, with that I say thank you and hopefully my next tutorial will be on how to make your own stages and uh, till then I've been Electropolitan and uh, you stay classy